Hi everyone! I have not done a sort of hangout how-to video and this is not really a violin video, it's a music adjacent video. I am just here in December 2020 in my studio and um, there is a party next door so I have a cup of, you can guess whatever you like, but I'm staying hydrated because it's 2020 and I'll take all the help I can get. Um, but yeah, I'm in my studio and I actually have been digging up some holiday crafts. I really love art. I really love um, making things. I love craft. Actually, this, this tumbler, it's really cool. I love these little artistic details. It has this drop of glaze and it has a little divot here where I can put a fingertip and hang on to it better. Um, it's by the ceramic studio that I really like. You can look it up. It's, it's spelled E-K-U-A ceramics and it's not a product placement. I just happen to have this as my studio cup. So I'm hanging out with you because I just thought I would let you into my little downtime relaxing mode. Um, I just finished my last public work engagement of 2020 and it's been quite a different year than I could have ever anticipated. And one thing that I love doing is making crafts. So what I thought I would do is kind of share with you, well share with you a craft that is just kind of soothing. Like if you like working with, with your hands, which I do, and if you've developed musician tactile um, sensitivity as I have, um, this could be kind of soothing and fun. First of all, like it's fun to just hold a thing. This is a plastic version of the classic hollow glass ornament. Um, and you know what's fun is if you have a music teacher or a music friend and you want to give them a present, you can make this about, it doesn't have to be for the holidays, it could be anything. Like you can make this about any occasion you want and you can switch out the, the ribbon on the top, you can fill it with stuff. So I actually, a couple of years ago, just sort of got myself a stash of music related uh, decor, things that I could make into ornaments. So these are some examples of ornaments with super cheap um, fillers that look really cool when you hang them up on a tree or when you hang them in your window. I have one that my, um, my daughter made for me hanging um, in, in my window at the studio and it catches the sunlight, it's really pretty. Um, I think this was her project. She jam packed it full of pom poms and then beads and um, pipe cleaners. And then this one is sort of like, this catches the light, it's kind of sparkly. So you can just kind of have fun with these things. And it just, I mean, it gives you an instrument. Sorry. I mean, this is what you get when you hang out with me. So. I have these hollow ornaments and uh, they come in different sizes. This is the bigger size and it's easier to demonstrate on, but there are smaller ones as well. Um, and the things, so the difference between the smaller and the bigger is about this size. And this one just simply has um, beads in it and it's pretty heavy. So you might wanna keep in mind if you're gonna hang it somewhere. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's really lightweight. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with music, but you can create the same thing. So it's just some tinsel ribbon I had left over. Oh, this is good for recycling packing materials as well. Like if you get ribbons from your presents or you have some spare tissue, you can rip it up or chop it up. And um, this is just pom-poms, random beads, some felt circles, and um, yeah, tinsel ribbon from, a, from some packaging. But it's super lightweight, so the challenge with these is you don't want to make them too heavy because if they're too heavy, the way you fill them up is the top comes off, right? So it comes off, it's just a clamp, just a clamp mechanism here. And so if it's too heavy, 
but when you hang it up, it'll just pull the clamp out. That's why I like to fill them with like um, ribbons and tinsel and you know pipe cleaners and lightweight things. Just have to be careful when you put it back together that all of these tiny little bits of metal that go over are not getting folded under. It won't affect how it functions, but it'll just affect um, the evenness of it. But you could even wrap the top with something. There are some fabric, uh, some um, markers that will write on this. And so you can write on the outside with metallic marker that's meant to write on plastic or acrylic or glass. Um, I personally love the feeling of the glass ones, but they break. And as a musician, you know, even though glass is probably better for the environment than anything plastic, um, as a musician, I have to suggest the non cut your fingers version. And if you take care with these and make them really nice, then they won't get broken in boxes over the years. Um, or you could get a super classy glass one and um, put nice things in it and then it will you just make sure you you um, give it to its recipient with a nice little box that's got some nice um, protective packaging in it that's environmentally friendly there's a lot of stuff out there so uh, so that they can keep it year after year and it won't break okay so I want to show you all the things that I have that I found just in a quick search online for for this stuff so I don't know if you can see, I've got these, let's see, I would like to get the light on them. I'll just pick them up individually. Basically, can you see that? 16th notes. Um, they're so tiny, it's hard to hold them. Let's see if I can get, if I can show you. There we go. There's a 16th note. So they're just little like confetti bits in all these different, different colors. So, I have those. Of course, I'm a violinist, so I had to find the treble clef. <laughs> and these are a little um, sparkly. I think you can't see too well because, ah, oh, there we go. If I put it in the light, you can see they're kind of like sparkly. They're sort of flexible. I think they're maybe a paper product. So you want things that are flexible that you can um, fit into the globe. I have different ribbons that ostensibly read different music. I think I would be very confused if I were to read a wavy line of music like this, but I'm gonna try to figure out what these notes are. So this is in the mixed meter. The repetitive section, I will just cut it out. I have some barber's scissors because I couldn't find my regular ones, but um, let's see here. So it's this phrase that repeats over and over. And notice they keep putting in the treble clef, just in case you forgot what instrument you're playing and what clef you're in. So this is it. So it looks like it has one measure of two eight, which is an F. This has no, no um, key signature. So I'm just gonna sing this for you. So the first measure is bum, just an F, so one, two, and then a measure of five, eight, bum, 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 and then another measure of five, eight, but sort of in another direction, bum, 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 bum. So sung all together, this repeating pattern that you might put in your ornament is bum, 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 I'm wrong. I got confused by the waviness. Okay, here we go again. I want to hate it, but I actually kind of love it. It's pretty. I don't know what it's what it's supposed to be, but I could hear a whole piece being based off of that. So that's, a, that's one kind of ribbon, so it's kind of a narrower, you can tell it's a fabric-y ribbon. So when, if you fit it in, the only downside is that this side, if you look at it just like that, is just an off-white, and then this side is printed. But that could be kind of nice. Um, I have another, look at this. 
This has a metal edge to it, so it'll keep, if you can fold it over to tuck it into the globe, um, then it will sort of hold, hold a shape and not sink down all into the bottom of the globe. I don't know if I can even sing this. Let's take a look. What is this? What even is this? Oh, it's just more treble clef stuff. Which is like more treble clef for me. I'm a violinist, but oh it does have it does have a recurring key signature, which is D major, two sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and then where does it start? Oh, it's all kinds of melodies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's lots of individual ones. I don't know if you can make sense of this. It's a little tricky to make sense of. So you have this melody here. And then you have a melody here. One thing I like about this ribbon is that you can kind of see through, although it's only, it's only printed on this side. You can kind of see through here, especially if light shines through. All right, so I'm going to try to sing this one for you. One of the melodies is, bah. sorry, my, my singing is not exactly accurate, but you'll get the idea. radical um although i like radical i would love to see like a super contemporary um decorative music ribbon challenge challenge to those out there who compose and print ribbons try it um and then the other one the other melody i see is also in the same key it's also in d major but it doesn't line up vertically with the um line above it you see like it shows a key signature here but this one is already going 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 and then it has a repeated key signature here so this is not really how music looks but it is how music looks in a sense um, because the notes are accurately written to a certain extent um okay here we go bum 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 sorry one two three bum bum best sight reader. Let's try that again. I'll slow it down for you. There we go. That's pretty good. I don't know. Can you work with that? I don't know. Okay, so we have this big ribbon here. And then I found this one. This is really cool. So this has sort of a gold glittery thing, but you can still see, because it's cut out, you can still see it on the opposite side, but it's got this really cool sort of, um, can you see like a rainbow shimmer effect, which will look, I think it'll look super cool inside a globe because it'll sort of um, go a little twisty like that. Um, now this, okay, I'm gonna cut the excerpt. You'll see that the excerpt is constantly reminding you that you're in treble clef. Um, just because it seems to think that you're gonna have a short memory because it's only this amount of time. That's the excerpt, all right? So let's see if I can read it backwards. Okay. It's also in an unusual meter, which it basically doesn't have a meter. Meter is the number of um, counts. So here we go. It'd be cool to have all these melodies in the same globe together. And then the final ribbon I have with me today that's musical is this one. 
So this one is actually, I don't think it was very thoroughly made because it's got some little bits, little extra bits that are still hanging out that need to be punched out, I think, like the treble clef. Not sure. The treble clef looks kind of solid, right? You don't see the lines in the middle. But this is kind of a cool effect. And I can imagine if you like a more somber, um, you could actually just fill this up with, with this and it would look kind of like formal, um, like concert, concerty version of an ornament. And you could then put in some, I don't know, for example, you could do this together. So you could have this sort of bunched up together inside the ornament. You can mock it up like this. You can just kind of see how things look together. So that could be kind of cool. There's lots you can do. Ooh, I have one more ribbon to read. Ooh, I have two more ribbons to read. No, I don't. Ooh, I just one. Okay. Ooh, this one has little stops. All right, I'm getting distracted. So this, uh, yes, so this, what are these notes? Um, this again, it seems like triple clef is considered a pretty decorative clef because this as well has treble clef, and I wasn't searching out treble clef. Um, treble clef is the violin clef, the flute clef, the um, soprano clef, for, for people who are singing soprano. And this also is, whoa, is this the same melody? It is! It's the same melody as this one. So I guess it's the same company. I wonder if they have um, copyright, so. If they do, I am going to get in trouble for this video. But it goes So you have that in black and in gold. And yes, the final music ribbon and the final ingredient I have today, besides those tinsel ribbons and these really cool pipe cleaners. I don't know. I used to play with pipe cleaners when I was a kid for art projects. They, they were just really popular, but I never had the tinsel ones. Tinsel, it just feels like kind of, feels kind of cool. I don't know if you can hear. If you can hear through the party beat next door. It just feels so cool. It's like kind of a bristly. It feels like something you would use for a cleaning brush, but then it sparkles. And I mean, I can't help it. I'm a performer who wears gowns on stage and I need to, sometimes I need to shimmer. So I just really love all this shimmer. And I wanna point out that regardless of the occasion or the holiday, when you mix up the colors, you can have um, different, different combinations of colors for different um, purposes. You can do gold and silver. You can do like gold and silver together. You can do um, gold and black together. You can have the silver and black I showed earlier. You can do like red and black, red and gold, any combo you like. And because the globe itself is clear, it can just be whatever. All right, the final melody of this demo. Again, they feel the need to reiterate the treble clef and, ooh, this is interesting. There is a time signature here. So this is the treble clef, this thing here. And then this says four, four. I don't know if you can see that, four, four. And then it has these two measures. A measure is until you see that one vertical line, that's called the bar line. And that tells you that it's another, you start at one again with the, with the next one. So um, I can't sing all of this in its ultimate glory because I can't sing two notes at once. But I'm a little suspect of this time signature because it says 4-4, four, four, which means it has four beats of quarter notes. So four quarter notes, one, two, three, four. But the notes don't add up to 4-4. Four, four. It doesn't add up to four quarter notes. It's one eighth note short in the first measure, and then it's 5-4 in the second measure. Oh, and it goes down to mezzo piano. Look, it says mezzo piano right here, right? But the mezzo piano, it's never supposed to be in the middle. The dynamic markings are always supposed to be outside of the stave. The stave is the, the set of lines here. 
So that's a little suspect. And if it's, oh my goodness, every other one is piano. <laughs> so this one is piano. And the next time it comes back, it's mezzo piano. So it's indicating mezzo piano is a little louder than quiet. So piano means quiet. Mezzo piano means like a little bit quiet or middle quiet. Okay, so it's a repeating pattern of two. And the, the time signature really should be um, seven, eight, five, four, seven, eight, five, four. So I think the person who did this is not a musician, or at least not a musician trained in any school I was trained in, uh, or most other musicians were trained in. Okay, so if I do the dynamics, you have to just assume the first note is two notes. Um, but if I do the dynamics, this is about what it sounds like. Repeat. That's kind of pretty. Okay. So those are our materials. And let's start filling these things up. So I am going to, let's see. Ooh, let's start with this really interesting one that I just did. I'll actually, you know, before I cut it, I will just, basically I just thread it in. Just thread it in, thread it in, thread it in. Like this. Party next door, they shouldn't be having a party, but they are. It doesn't affect me, it gives me a beat. Okay, so I threaded it in, so I have this. And then I am going to now snip it right through the 4-4. All right, put that in there. Shake it around a little. I will drop in some of this confetti. Remember the 16th note confetti we started with? I don't know why I find this so relaxing. Just filling up globe here. And then I got these little extra bits that I cut out before. So I'll just put in the little extra bits. Um, and so this. And this. And this can kind of be the test one. Like, what do we like in here? Ooh, I'm really liking the. Um, See the iridescent gold? That looks really pretty. It catches the light really nicely. Um, let me try some of this black. I wonder how that looks. I'll actually thread it in before I cut it. Okay, so I'm gonna do black and gold together but you can kind of see like the black needs to be on its own. Um, so I'm gonna take that out. That's making it look kind of busy. And let's see what happens when we thread this through. Maybe I can put this little scrap of black in just for an accent, for an accent. I can't believe I just did that by accident. So now I will put this in. So I have to fold it a little, but I don't wanna bend it too much. But I'll bend it with the shiny bit outwards. Oh, they're both shiny. All right, so it looks like the, the triple clef, it's a little hard to see it, um, it's in there. It gets a little jammed, it's right there, because it's just a little too big for this one. But if you shake it around, it looks okay, but I don't think that you can completely control the angle, so that may not be the best one. And these little 16th notes, I don't know if you can see them, at the bottom. Oh, it looks really good. So those could be like a little extra something at the very bottom, but they're not going to be really visible. So I think the winners here are the, um, the gold and then one of these. Let's try this one. Let's see what happens when we use this with the wire edge. Um, yeah, my favorite so far is the gold cutout ribbon. But it also looks nice with the music. Let's see. 
Okay, so the thicker ribbon, it really fills up the space in there to the point that it gets a little too busy, right? So you can't really see through. So if you were to do the ribbon, I would just do that one by itself, but I think it's actually too big and too bulky. So then we have this and we could use just a little something to fill it in, but not too much. So we do that now. So we do this. This could look pretty. Let's see what happens. That looks nice. So you see if uh, there's this extra space sort of at the top. So you can just fill it in with something a little poofy that will catch the light, make it sparkle. And here you have kind of like a grab bag version. So I'm just gonna cut this piece off. So sort of like a grab bag of little odds and ends. And that's kind of fun because if you have fabric scraps from a project or you have some, um, I don't know, pom-poms or even, you know what would be cool is if you have a dress that you had altered and my dresses are always, my gowns are always too long for me. Um, so I always have them altered shorter and then I have the extra fabric. So you could take scraps of your concert dress fabric or maybe if you have a favorite piece of, um, like if you have a dress that, or a, piece of concert clothing or even a, a bow tie that meant something to you at some point and you don't know what to do with it, you can make it into an ornament or hang it up or make something special out of it. Just stuff it in one of these thingies. So yeah, it's kind of fun. So here we have one completed ornament of odds and ends. I'm just going to try to see what happens if I just quickly make one that's just the gold here. So we'll do just the gold. I've always really liked doing crafts. I don't know why. I was an only child. <laughs> I was homeschooled. I loved making things. I wasn't always homeschooled. I was homeschooled for like a year. But I feel like a distinctive enough um hmm. so you have to twist this one a bit as you go or else it doesn't want to lay down the way it needs to go <clears throat> but yeah i feel like pointing out that i was homeschooled explains a lot about me um because homeschooling is pretty cool you learn on your own time i think a lot of us in 2020 are homeschooling ourselves in one way or another Okay, so this ribbon actually gets a little bit bent around. So I think the thing to do with this is to do pieces. So you cut pieces so it can kind of bend and rest. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So it kind of rests, it pushes itself up against the edge and it just stays there. See if I can get it to happen again in a different direction. You know, I started looking at the various uh, music gift items out there a while back, and um, yeah, it really wants to be this one. And I found that a lot of it is like pretty but inaccurate, like these um, music, <clears throat> like these sort of like music note themed items. It's just not quite, not quite right. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for musicians, precision is kind of important. So if you are thinking of um, getting a gift for a musician or making a gift for a musician, um, just bear in mind that there's going to be, there are going to be some <laughs> Some challenges finding something that is actually sort of nice and informed um, because no one wants to you know walk into orchestra rehearsal with a decoration on their case that is like not quite accurate unless it's to be funny just because it's like um, 
don't know how to describe it. It's not a snobbery thing. It's more just like you recognize the things that are a little bit off very quickly because you spend a lot of time practicing, reading music. Um, images of instruments are often sort of inaccurate and um, it's tough to, to really get a great gift. So if you can think about that accuracy issue, if you're getting something for someone so they can actually like really proudly display it in their, in their school and work life, um, then that's very cool. Oh, I like how this turned out. I'm just gonna leave it like this. It was kind of pretty. Um, or what do you think? Should I put some tinsel in there just to be extra? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. So I can't help it. Extra sparkle. Sign me up. Um, but yeah, then I started thinking, you know, how can we bring like fun around like music symbols? Because it seems like a lot of symbols are a lot of music um, gifts and merch and stuff like that. There we go. That'd be pretty. So if you get it in the light, look really, really cool and you can kind of see through it. So yeah, I think music is very symbolic. So a lot of the gifts, a lot of the decorative items, they're not really accurate, but they're symbolic. They sort of evoke a feeling, a mood. So how can we kind of play with the stuff that's out there that isn't completely accurate, but that is sweet and thoughtful. And how can we make things that are personal without having to make our own sort of um, individual things? But what you could do, you could make your own ribbon out of a piece of music you're working on if you photocopy it, <laughs> um, or if you print it out, print out an extra copy. And you can just cut, like cut the individual lines out, and then you can create your own ribbons inside this, or make a collage with that kind of thing. So that would be really cool. And I think it's it's just nice to kind of, you know, musicians read music. I'm gonna see what happens if I put this one in. Um, we read music like we read books. You know, we, we read the scores. If we're classically trained, we read, um, read music and we hear it in our heads as we read it. So, yeah, this one is not as um, as stiff, so I think it's going to be more of a sort of evocative thing. And then if you look closer at it, you'll see that it's music. So I'm actually going to fill it up a little bit more with the ribbon. Um, yeah, we, we just read music like books. It's just second nature to us. And, you know, a lot of the stuff in society that shows music imagery is kind of like this like it looks like music but when you look closer it's not really accurate and it's a funny feeling because you appreciate when music is referenced but yet it's kind of your life and you just don't really see it kind of accurately portrayed and it's not a problem but um, if anyone out there wants to create stuff that is accurate, um, it's really nice to have that, especially for students, I think. Um, I really appreciate all the fan art that people make. Like, they get the image of the violin perfect. They get, like, the right number of pegs. They get me playing on the left side. And it's just really nice. Um, it's nice to see art around something that you love. So this is kind of all blurring together a little bit. So what happens if I put a treble clef in there? Um, maybe if I put it vertical. But yeah, I love the fan art. It's so sweet and so beautiful. So here we go. That's a thing. I'm not sure it's my taste. So I'm gonna take it out and maybe I will do um, confetti never hurt anyone. A bit of confetti. Ooh, I like that. It's subtle. So put in a little bit of this confetti, and it creates just a little color in there. And then maybe a little bit of this, or maybe a little bit of tinsel. 
this works if it can be visible. Nope, that's confusing. This looks pretty. So if I may say so myself, or we could do red. I'm partial to gold. Um, you could do red, it would look cool. I'm gonna put some gold in here. I'm gonna do it in little bits. Woo! Little explosion of time. Yeah, I did a project where I sourced um, fan art. I invited people to make fan art. It's an album called Retrospective, and um, duh, I got tinsel all over me. It's fine. And I just had so many wonderful submissions, and I run a Fan Art Friday feature on my Facebook page. And people have been giving me fan art after concerts, and I've really missed the post-concert signings in this time when there aren't concerts. Um, Right, so we have a little something here. Like, I don't know if you can see. It's hard to see it. That's the problem with the black. But I think that's too much gold, so I'm gonna take a little bit out and have just a couple hints of it, and that's enough. Plus the confetti at the bottom. It looks pretty cool. I don't know if you can see. So you have confetti at the bottom, and you have the music notes, you have the little bit of gold, and then put the lid on and shake it all up to blend it. Where did the lid go? Here it is. Yeah, I've gotten fan art from little kids and from professional artists. It's really cool. I love art exchanges. Here we go. It feels so good. I love making stuff. All right, so we have this, and we have this, we have these two, and this is wishing you happy crafting. This is our hodgepodge. Happy crafting, happy music making, happy listening to music. Um, yeah, so this is December 2020. It's not an easy time. It's a time to really think and just try to get through. We're almost at 2021. And I know in 2021, I'll be back on the road. So in the meantime, I'll be doing, um, it's just so fun to look at. I'll be doing, um, yeah, I have some stuff coming up in 2021, but I don't know exactly what it'll be. So I'll be just keeping things updated on my um, Instagram. And I have some YouTube posts coming up, some videos that I'm really excited to share. So I just keep plugging away and making my music, making my art, doing my little hobbies and thinking a lot and staying busy. So thank you for hanging out with me and hopefully you will find a moment to make something fun. I think I'm gonna give these to people who um, appreciate music, who I wanna send something handmade to. So I'll probably be giving them to them for the holidays. But yeah, all right. I'm gonna wrap up here, clean out my supplies, put them back away. And I wish you a good end of the year. And oh my goodness, a better 2021. <laughs> and I hope to see you in 2021 when we get to that year and when we get back to performances. Looking forward to seeing you on the road and maybe um, getting some new fan art from all of you. Bye.